Hey y'all and welcome to day two of our 12 days of Christmas series where we are doing 12 Tumblr tutorials in a row and 12 giveaways. I am giving away some gift cards and custom tumblers and all of those amazing companies have provided lots of gifts for our channel as well. So make sure you are part of the Brittany Barnes Boutique Tumblr art group so you can take a part in those giveaways. Winners and prizes will be announced daily in the group. Let's go ahead and get started on this tumbler. We are using a 24 ounce travel mug from the Stilled Magnolia. This is one of their newer tumblers and I absolutely love it. I love the handle and it is the perfect size to put any sort of drinks in and also fit in your cup holder. Completely random, but I am sorry if you hear the clacking and tapping in the background. It is a monsoon outside. My house is full of windows and it is coming in sideways. There's no escaping the noise, so I hope that isn't too bothersome throughout the tutorial. Okay, so we are using some vinyl from Gracefully Created. And as you can see, I have trimmed it to where it comes over that contour of the cup a little bit. And that's because I want my glitter to sort of the thickness of my glitter to stop right there and then just ombre up to the top portion, if that makes sense. So I did cut it to where we can press it down over that curve. And then my seam is going to be under my handle. So as you can see, I went a little bit further than half over into that space underneath the handle with that first portion of my vinyl once I had it lined up at the top. I cut a slit right on the handle pieces. <laughs> I'm trying to explain this the best I can, but I cut a little slit on the vinyl so that I could sort of pull it around the edges of those, the bottom of the handle pressed it down with my nail and then just use my craft knife to cut around. We are going to add some glitter so it does need to look good but it doesn't have to look great because the glitter does have a little bit of a thickness to it so there's a tiny portion around the bottom of those handles that will be covered with like the edge of the glitter. So once we get all the way around the tumbler, we are just going to repeat those same steps by pressing it down with my nail and then just working my way around with my craft blade to curve that vinyl or trim the curve around the handle. Once we have that done, I am not going to use a piece of tape or anything because of course it would be a little difficult to get it in between that handle, but I am going to trim off the excess vinyl. I used the handle as a guide for the top and the bottom and then went, of course, from the center of that top piece of the handle to the center of the bottom piece on the inside and then lifted the vinyl up to remove the excess vinyl on the top and underneath. After that, I'm going to take my craft knife and cut some slits into the bottom piece of the vinyl, just where it starts to curve around the tumbler. We're going to lift these pieces up and press 
press them down to allow them to overlap a little bit so that it would be flat over this curve. You can use your heat gun to press out any bubbles or help the vinyl stretch. Just be cautious if you do use the heat gun not to stretch your vinyl too much because it can rip or tear it. I'm going to grab one of my Color Fix paints from Colorflex. This one is wine. And we're going to paint the bottom of this tumbler as well as the handle, this really pretty red color. And when we get to where our stainless meets our vinyl wrap, you'll notice that I try to do a very, very light coat right there just to help it almost ombre up into the vinyl itself because when I start the, I guess you can say, waterfall of glitter up towards the top of the tumbler, I don't want to be able to see any sort of harsh line between my vinyl and my paint. I did do two really thin coats of paint. This paint has excellent coverage, but I did do a very thin coat just so that we could build up that coverage around where I am ombreing my paint up into my vinyl. So when I went in with that second coat, I just repeated the same steps and dabbed my paintbrush or makeup brush is what I was using around where our stainless meets our vinyl just to blend that in a little bit better so our glitter will not have a harsh line underneath. And then I went in with a small paintbrush and painted the handle as well. Once we have all of our paint complete, I'm going to go in with some painter's tape and tape around the bottom of those handles just so that I don't get my glitter or epoxy all over my vinyl. We are going to be using the epoxy method to apply our glitter. I want the glitter to really stay stuck around that handle whenever I do apply epoxy. It's an awkward curve. So where you can use glitter glue, since we are doing a chunkier glitter, epoxy is my preference. After I applied my epoxy, I realized that I didn't even know why I taped off the bottom portion of that handle because we are doing a glitter ombre so and we're using the same color glitter so if you're using a different glitter for your handle definitely tape off both 
of the top and bottom portions of the handle but if you're using the same glitter as the bottom and you're doing the same design you don't have to tape off the bottom of your handle because your glitter is going to ombre up underneath it so it doesn't matter if your glitter gets there anyway <laughs> so after I took that tape off I am completely out of frame but I'm adding epoxy to the bottom portion of the tumbler I'm not going all the way up just slightly above the bottom part of the handle is where I am stopping my epoxy. We are using Santa Baby from PDB Creative Studio and we're first going to dump it on the handle just making sure that we get it in all areas and cover it up really well and then we're going to go heavy around the bottom portion of the tumbler then just hold our tumbler at an angle and sprinkle that glitter on lightly to allow it to fall up into our vinyl. I do not show this in the tutorial, but after you get your glitter on, do make sure that you go over with a gloved hand and tap down any of those chunky bits that may be standing up to help you eliminate multiple coats of epoxy and harsh sanding, especially around the handle. So we gave this two coats of epoxy after that glitter layer dried, and then we are going to add on our decal. I have a hot cocoa decal from Gracefully Created and I have already obviously <laughs> put it on the tumbler and removed it because I didn't like how it looked just the decal itself. I offset everything and I felt like this also needed an offset. So I grabbed some of my white shimmer vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft. And since this is not an image I created myself, I can't go into my design space and create an offset for that. Well, actually, now that I think about it, you can. You could have, or I could have scanned the decal, imported it into design space, and just made it the exact same size as the sticker and created offsets. But Seems about the same amount of work either way, so <laughs> we are going to just put the decal onto this white shimmer glitter, and I'm going to cut the offset myself, and then of course the white wasn't enough, so then we are going to add the red in the background as well.
Now, I am not a fan of drips. I have done them in the past and I continue to do them only because I want to show y'all how. Um, and I think that it's good for me to step out of my comfort zone and show y'all how to do things so that you can really be inspired and to step out of your comfort zone and test your creative abilities as well. And I'm not going to lie, it might not work. You know, I mean, we try things and some things just don't work out, period. Like me trying a snow globe tumbler or a zipper cup. Gosh, I can think of so many different designs that I have saw other creators do and think, oh, that looks awesome. I'm going to try it too. And it is a mega fail, but I can take what I learned from attempting that design and use that on something else or use the elements from the design on something else to make it my own. And like this cup, for example, I have had very successful drips in the past, but for whatever reason, I had two others of these going because I did plan on putting them on the website for Christmas and I ruined both of them with epoxy drips. I did them both at separate times, so I'm not really sure what happened, but it just was not working out with the epoxy. So instead of trying that again, I started looking for different alternatives to create a drip around the top of the tumbler, or I was just going to move that decal up. And then I remembered that I had this tulip paint, so I thought, well, I will try doing a drip with tulip paint. This is not my favorite method to do a drip. I definitely prefer the epoxy better, but I have had quite a few requests to do this. And I'm going to be honest, I have tried it a couple of times and it didn't work out. <laughs> so since we can see through this tulip paint a little bit, I did go around the top rim of the tumbler and just dabbed some paint on so that we can take away from the pattern of the vinyl and it will be a little bit thicker at the top where our drip is going to start. A lot of times I see creators taking the tulip paint and doing a very thick rim around the top of the tumbler and then just knocking it on the table and allowing that to fall however it falls just naturally. But I like having a thicker drip or a wider one at the top of my tumblers. So rather than doing that really thick line around the top rim, I'm going to basically color it in where I want my drip to fall. All of those lines are going to even out as this dries. And then right along the edge of the bottom, I'm going to get a little bit thicker so it will fall down just a hair and look more natural on the tumbler. I just felt like doing it this way it gives me so much more control because I do have more control when I do an epoxy drip, especially when that epoxy is starting to set up. You can put it where you want it pretty much and control the thickness of the drips and areas as well. And you can't do that so much with the tulip paint. So once I had the tulip paint on, I just tapped it onto my desk to allow that to fall down. And then it was time to add on our sprinkles. Just make sure that you do all this tapping before you add on your sprinkles or they will get covered up by your tulip paint. This is some s'mores sprinkles from PDB Creative Studio and we're just picking out the tan color and the browns to add onto our drip. I really wish that I would have just left this part out because I did end up saving one of those tumblers by sanding off that epoxy drip and I just used some red glitter on it rather than the sprinkles and I feel like it turned out a whole lot better. But it's totally your preference. I know everyone is different so you might like this a whole lot better than I do. After I finished adding all of those sprinkles on, I grabbed Holly from Colorflex 
and I just pinched some of that glitter up and sprinkled it around on our drip. After I allowed that to dry overnight, I did go in with my craft knife and trim off any of the excess tulip paint that might have made its way over that top rim, just so that we can expose that stainless. And then I went in with two final coats of epoxy. Now, although I am not a huge fan of the tulip paint drip, I do think that this turned out cute. It's really fun and festive, and it does all tie together really nicely. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this tutorial. Do not forget to join the Brittany Barnes Boutique Tumblr Art Group so that you can enter to win one or all of the 12 giveaways that we are having for our 12 days of Christmas. All materials that I have used will be listed down in the description below for you along with some discount codes. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we will see you next time.